she's in a sore place. Because they, they took out a couple of juicy things and put them in fish, maybe. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good news is uh, milk was set in a pie chart. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's going to be hopefully in the and the 7th of March. Hmm. We said that. Oh, good. Two days. Good. The day our amendments are due. That's good. Pardon me? The day our amendments are due. Great. That's great. Good. <laughs> We couldn't wait two days. Actually, one of those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never had any meat. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's probably where it's at. Well, if you guys, let's just leave you on just to double check. on his desk.
place. Okay. Right next to the. Okay. You never know. Maybe. The problem is I messed my voice up. I'm a little scratchy. No. It was a special request. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, on I emergency, yeah. you know, on I emergency. Yeah, well, you remember yesterday I told you that John doesn't want to call in. Funny. John doesn't want to call in. So, just in case something happens. On the off chance of something happens, we'll call later.
The subcommittee will come to order. The subcommittee meets today to mark up H.R. 5515, National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2019. I want to thank all the members of the subcommittee for their attendance, participation, contributions, the overall process this year. I also want to thank all of our staff who are sitting in front of us for all the great work that they have done. I especially want to convey my sincere thanks to our ranking member, Nikki Songas, for her support and contribution to this market, the bipartisan partnership that she and her staff have demonstrated in helping to craft this mark is very much appreciated. Um, unless her retirement plans change, this will be Nikki's last mark as a member of the House Armed Services Committee and after more than a decade of service in the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, she began serving on this committee in 2007 and is not only a well-respected colleague, she is a friend. We have worked on some very challenging issues together. I'm particularly proud of the work that we have done together on sexual assault uh, bills in, uh, to address sexual assault in the military. Uh, we have introduced uh, the the Strong Act, the Be Safe Act, the Fair Military Act, the Support Act, the Protect Act, the Be Heard Act. And I must tell you that we've worked on a co collaborative and bipartisan process on every portion of those bills except the titles, which she claims sole jurisdiction of and has done a phenomenal job in doing. Uh, Nikki, on behalf of the subcommittee, thank you again for your service to your country, your constituents, and this committee. We are all going to miss you, and I know that everyone in this committee counts you as a dear friend, and we certainly know that you'll be staying in touch with us. Uh, this mark addresses the bipartisan priorities of our subcommittee members. Last year during our subcommittee hearings and events, we heard how years of continuous combat operations compounded with years of deferred modernization has created a crisis in military readiness. The National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2018 enacted last year. The bipartisan budget agreement signed by the President earlier this year, followed by the fiscal year 2018 Consolidated Appropriations Act last month, all laid the foundation for our military's much needed stability and recovery. Combined with the fiscal year 2019 budget request, the military services should be well postured to continue the long-term modernization and readiness recovery. We all acknowledge that this, this damage did not occur in a single year and it will take consistent levels of long-term increased investment and budget predictability to rebuild a modernized military that is prepared for full spectrum operations. So it is within this framework that we assembled this mark. The mark focuses on Restoring full spectrum readiness through modernization and recapitalization of existing force structures. <clears throat> the dollars invested on today's modernization enables tomorrow, tomorrow's readiness. As part of the mark, the subcommittee conducted oversight on approximately $97.9 billion budget authority for fiscal year 2019. This mark addresses the importance of modernization and works to ensure acquisition strategies that are aligned with the new national defense strategy. This year, the subcommittee is proposing 10 bill provisions and 18 pieces of direct report language, all of which were informed by members' requests and information gathered from various subcommittee oversight activities. I want to briefly highlight three of these oversight issues in the mark. <clears throat> First, the Joint Surveillance Target Attack Radar System, or JSTARS, recapitalization program. The Air Force submitted a budget request that did not include funding for continuing the JSTARS recap program. We have concluded that completely walking away from this program would prove to be an unacceptable level of risk to our warfighters and neglects years of substantial and relevant analysis the Air Force completed to justify the importance of the program. The MARC supports the Air Force concept for advanced battle management command and control, but would require the Air Force to continue the JSTARS recap program as the concept's foundational capability. The second issue of the mark is the mitigation of physiological episodes, or PEs, in tactical and training aircraft. We held one hearing solely on this issue so far in 2018 and addressed it in two other hearings and one briefing last year. The ranking member and I have worked closely on this issue to include traveling to Pax River National Air Station to meet with pilots, and I just returned from Hill Air Force Base where I had the opportunity to meet with pilots and maintainers. We all recognize the work that is being done to mitigate these events but the overall progress made in determining a root cause is just too slow. These physiological episodes are not individual incidents. At this point, we have an aggregate of these events that could point to a systemic issue. Since March 1st, Air Force student instructor pilots have reported 12 additional physiological events in the T-6 trainer aircraft in which the entire T-6 fleet was grounded for the same reasons and returned to fly just two days earlier on February 27th. The mark this year will have several provisions to help facilitate, 
facilitate mitigation efforts and will require the Secretary of the Navy and the Secretary of the Air Force to certify that any new aircraft procured will have the most recent technological advancements necessary to mitigate future PEs. The MARC also authorizes multi-year procurement authority for FA-18EF Super Hornet aircraft to generate better savings for the taxpayer and provide needed capability and capacity to the Navy. And the third highlight for the MARC is Armored Brigade Combat Team Modernization. The Army this year is requesting enough funding to modernize one and a half ABCTs. This will help accelerate modernization and improve capabilities against peer and near peer competitors. We also believe, given this increased investment for ABCTs modernization, the Army should examine the cost and schedule benefits of using multi-year procurement contracts for combat vehicle platforms that, comp that comprise ABCTs. The MARC directs the Army to conduct a cost-benefit analysis of using multi-year procurement contracts. We believe results of the cost analysis may demonstrate better cost savings and more stability in the industrial base. The subcommittee's recommendations to the Chairman's MARC will also include full funding for most major programs in our jurisdiction, as well as recommendations for additional support to improve prove capabilities and mitigate existing shortfalls. These items would include <clears throat> UH-60M Blackhawks and AH-64E Apache attack helicopters for the Army National Guard, striker combat vehicles, F-35 Joint Strike Fighter spare parts, critical munitions, short-range air defense and indirect fire protection capabilities, fixed-wing ISR and communications aircraft upgrades, and National Guard and Reserve component equipment. In summary, this is a good mark that provides necessary and reasonable oversight and together with the full committee mark, continues the process of rebuilding our military. We must prepare today to dominate the future battlefield of tomorrow. I strongly encourage your support and I now recognize Ms. Songus uh, for her uh, opening comments. Well, I'd like to thank you, Chairman Turner, for your uh, very gracious remarks. Uh, we've certainly had a long tenure working on the issue of preventing and responding to sexual assault in the military. Much good work has been done. Uh, I'm sure it will be continued under your leadership uh, once I leave. Uh, and it's been my honor to work for you, uh, work with you on, uh, in, on this subcommittee in a traditionally bipartisan way. Uh, it's certainly a worthy model. I wish it were more fully replicated across Congress uh, in general, but um, it's something uh, I value deeply as I've been here in Congress. Uh, the mark includes genuine compromises on some complex issues. I'm especially pleased that the MARC includes four proposals related to better understanding and reducing physiological episodes in the Navy, the Marine Corps, and on Air Force aircraft as well. While the F-18 has the worst recent track record on this front by far, it is not the only aircraft to experience such problems. The T-45 and T-6 have also had such issues, uh, and as we know in the past, the F-22 went through a similar period. So it's important to keep calling on DOD to solve this problem wherever it occurs. With regard to the F-18, the MARC proposes mandatory upgrades to the aircraft. I support these provisions because of the unacceptable risks this problem currently poses to our pilots and the urgent need to resolve these issues. These provisions reflect what we have heard from the Navy, NASA, and numerous contractors through a series of hearings and separate discussions and build on detailed information provided by the Navy to Congress on this issue over the past two years. It also provides a waiver to account for unexpected technology developments. My hope is that these upgrades, plus other efforts the Navy and the contractor have underway, will over time reduce the frequency of these events to an acceptable and manageable level. The F-18 will remain a critical part of Navy and Marine Corps aviation for many years we have to make sure it performs as well as possible, and we owe it to our pilots to make sure the planes they are flying are safe. I think this language helps ensure that down the road. The MARC also requires the Secretary of Defense to provide a detailed cost estimate and schedule for the F-35 program's future upgrade efforts known as C2D2. While I support upgrading the F-35 to make it more effective, Congress has to have this information against which to measure future efforts. I believe the MARC appropriately directs the Air Force to continue the JSTARS recap program while the service works to develop a next generation JSTARS capability in order to ensure this capability remains available to maximum effect to our service members. 
Finally, the proposal appropriately increases funding for research and development aimed at using advanced materials to incre increase ballistic protection and reduce the weight of the personal protective equipment we issue to those we send into harm's way. So thank you again, Mr. Chairman, and a special thank you to all our staff who's uh, helped put this together, and especially Doug Bush, who it's been my pleasure to work with. Um, so I look forward to the full committee markup in the coming weeks and urge support for today's mark. Excellent. Thank you. We will now proceed to markup H.R. 5515, the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2019. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with. Copies of our subcommittee marked and directive report language were made available and distributed to member offices on Tuesday, April 24th. Are there any questions or discussion on the subcommittee mark? Seeing none, if there is no discussion, the chair lays before the members the text of the subcommittee mark for consideration. Without objection, the mark is open to amendment at any point. Are there any amendments to the subcommittee mark? Uh, seeing none, uh, the question now occurs on the adoption of the mark. <clears throat> so many as are in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the mark is adopted. <clears throat> there is, uh, nope, wrong part of the script. Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Cook, for the purposes of a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the subcommittee report the mark favorably to the full committee. The question is on the motion of the gentleman from California, Mr. Cook. So many as are in favor will say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. A quorum being present, the ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. <clears throat> Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. Without objection, members have five legislative days within which to submit written statements into the record, so ordered. I also ask unanimous consent that staff be authorized to make necessary conforming technical and clerical changes and to remove from the mark provisions that would cause the mark to refer to other committees or would result in additional direct spending or result in an earmark. Without objection, so ordered. There being no further legislative business before the subcommittee, this meeting is adjourned.